Hi everyone, uh, it's time to go through the week six course notes, uh, rates and ratios. Now I'll start with ratios. Ratios compare the size of two quantities in the same units. So let's look at this very basic example. We're mixing seven kilograms of cement and 10 kilograms of sand. Okay, so the cement has a seven on that side, the sand has a 10 on that side. And since they're the same units, kilograms, we don't need to write units in our ratio because if it's seven portions to 10 equal uh, size portions, it could be seven buckets and 10 buckets, seven grams and 10 grams. It doesn't matter. That's what the ratio tells us. Seven portions of this mixed with 10 portions of that. As for what goes on the left and right, well, there's no real convention in ratios in which should go where, as long as it aligns with the words. If we're saying cement to sand, it's seven to 10. If we were saying sand to cement, obviously it would be 10 to seven. Okay, so whatever order we've put the words is the order we put our numbers. Now, as for simplifying ratios, well, we can look at seven to 10 and say, yes, I can make a seven kilogram cement and 10 kilo uh, sand mixture. I can make 17 kilograms of concrete that way. Uh, but maybe that's, that's not enough. Maybe I want twice that amount. So I'll times two on the left and I'll times two on the right. And obviously I will now use 17 kilograms of cement to, I'm um, sorry, I'll use 14 kilograms of cement to 20 kilos of sand. Okay, I think that's a fairly logical approach, but also look what we're doing, it's fractions. I'm saying that seven when compared to 10 is equivalent to 14 when compared to 20. So simplifying fractions and simplifying ratios is actually the exact same thing. I'm looking for common ratios. Now note that I started with the simplest form. Seven to 10 was the simplest form. I was just showing that it's equivalent to 14 to 20. I could have said seven threes are 21 and 10 threes are 30. These are all batches of concrete with sand and cement in the same ratio. I could also have made a smaller batch. Half of the seven is three and a half. Half of the 10 is five. I could have said just use three and a half kilos of cement and five kilos of sand. These are all relevant ratios, but if we want to talk about what's the simplest form of a ratio, again, we started with it. This was the simplest form of a ratio. It's got no units in it. There's whole numbers only, not the three and a half one, and they're the smallest numbers possible. Because seven and 10, apart from number one, have no further common factors. And we know from fractions that seven tenths would have been my last answer. I wouldn't have written the fraction as three and a half over five, no way. And I wouldn't have left it as 14 on 20. So we've got direct comparison here between ratios and fractions when simplifying. Now, let's look at this next example. Again, it's talking about units. They may not initially be the same, but we get them the same. Mixing 200 mils of cordial and one liter of water. Well, we can go cordial to water as 200 mils to one liter, great. But we need to know some conversions in this course. And one of them is just what does milli mean? And we hopefully know, and we'll get onto it later in our rates where there's more of these, that milli means a thousandth. So a milliliter is a thousandth of a liter. In other words, one liter must have a thousand of these little milliliters in it. So we convert 200 mils is in a ratio with a thousand mils. One liter is a thousand mils. Now they've got the same units, we don't need them anymore. 200 of a unit compared to a thousand of the same unit. And we can see a common factor there, 200. There's one 200 on the left, and there's five 200s on the right. Here is the showing dividing both sides by 200. So the simplified ratio of cordial to water is one to five. Great, all right. Page down, please. Uh, and here's just stating that, yeah, it's exactly the same as a fraction uh, simplification. Whatever we do to the left, we do to the right. But it's, again, times or divide. We, we can't plus one to the left and plus one to the right. That example of 200 mils of cordial compared to 100, uh, I mean, 1,000 mils of water. I'm not going to, if I want to make more cordial, I'm not just going to add um, one more litre of cordial and one more liter of water, that's gonna be pretty strong. Okay, so we don't add stuff to try and make a, a, a batch bigger. We multiply it by something or we divide it by something. No plus minus. All right, here's some just different ways to express ratios. Josh earns half as much as Tim. 
uh, in numbers that's just saying, I and mean, we don't know what the actual dollars are, just the ratio. Like for every half of a whatever, a dollar, Josh earns, Tim will earn one dollar. Uh, but that's not simple as form, just because it's a decimal. Okay, we want whole numbers. We don't want this half in there. So we have times are left by two, or half times two is one, and one times uh, two is two. So the ratio between Josh and Tim is one and two. For every dollar Josh earns, Tim earns two dollars. Yeah, that's Josh earning half as much. In a childcare centre, there are four staff for every 14 children. All right, staff, children, the four goes on the side of the staff, the 14 on the side of the children, and clearly four and 14 have two in common, they're both even, so we can halve both sides and there's no reduction in a ratio of two to seven. Australian dollar being worth 75 US cents, this could be way out of date, I have no idea. But I've put the Australian dollar on the left and the US dollar on the right. And it tells us the Australian dollar, as in the Australian one dollar, is worth 75 cents US. Well, there's the Australian dollar and there's the 75 cents. But of course, dollars and cents are different units, but they can become the same. Can compare 100 cents to 75 cents. We don't need the cents anymore. So 100 to 75, we spot a 25. It's in both of them. There's four 25s on the left, three 25s on the right. So four to three ratio. Another one, 1 1.25 hours compared to 20 minutes. Well, they're not telling us what they mean, but it doesn't matter. We're just putting a 1.25 hours on the left and 20 on the right. Now, be careful with these. I know we all know time, but it's it's easy to mess this conversion up from hours to minutes because 1.25 hours a lot of people accidentally read that as one hour 25 minutes but 0.25 hours is literally a quarter of an hour we know 0.25 is a quarter um, I could go to the side and say well what is 0 0.25 by 60 yeah I could do that I could use my um, uh, decimal rules or I could say what's a quarter of 60 um, I could just work out what, what's a quarter of an hour? Half an hour is 30, a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. These are all going to get the same answer. So I've got the one is 60 minutes, a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. So just make sure you're getting it to 75 minutes, not reading it as one hour 25 minutes, and that's 1.25. So 75 minutes being compared to 20 minutes, I don't need the units anymore because they're both minutes. Uh, 75 to 20, they both have a common factor of five, which brings us down to 15 to four. All right, so that's simplify ratios. Now there's another format. Sometimes it's uh, better to uh, express a ratio in one to something format or something to one. Now this statement here, one to x, it just means we're not talking about simplest form. That x could be a horrible decimal, okay? I don't care. It's basically saying force the left-hand side of the ratio to be one and the right-hand side will be whatever it is. And this format, x to 1 is saying, yeah, force the right-hand side to be 1, and the left will be whatever it is. In this survey of 1,028 Uni of Newcastle students, 338 stated that studying maths was their favourite way to spend the weekend. What am I doing now? I'm not a student. Anyway. Um, 338 being compared to 1,028. So what I'm doing here is comparing the students that stated maths was the best way to spend the weekend, compared to all university students that I surveyed. And when I force the left-hand side to be one, how do I force 338 to be one? I divide it by itself. Any number divided by itself is one. So if I divide the left by 338, as long as I divide the right by 338, it's all good. And I get a ratio of one to three point over, you know. Let's just be rough here. This might be for a, a, a student magazine. And I can say approximately one in every three students at University of Newcastle prefer to spend their weekend studying maths. So you can see it's got a, 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 a practical sort of use. Uh, I would use a one to three ratio in an article much quicker than I would use oh, 338 out of 1,028. One in three is much more catchier and straight to the, the guts of what it is. Note the data may be uh, fake, totally made up. So if we're getting forced to turn either left or right into the number one, all we're doing is dividing by itself. So here it's saying force the left-hand side of the ratio to be one. I started with four to 14, so to convert a four into a one, I'll divide by itself. Got to do the same, divide by four to the other side, so it becomes one to three and a half. In the next one, it's the same question, but we've got calculators, it looks nastier, but it doesn't matter. 
force the left hand side to be 1, left hand side is a 0.3, well 0.3 divided by 0.3 will give you 1. 1 1.4 divided by 0.3, well we're able to do that now, um, but there's no need. We've got our calc within this, and 1.4 divided by 0.3 is 4.6 repeater. And the next two are just the other direction. They're just saying force the right hand side to be 1. Well, if there's a 10 on the right, divide both sides by 10. Done. Again, convert the right hand side to be 1. The right hand side is 0.06, divide by itself, do the same to the left. Alright, so that's how to convert to a 1 to x or an x to 1 ratio. Now problem solving using ratios. The first ones were well, very simplistic, but it just gives the concept that often there's two ways to, well let's say there's always two ways to look at these ratio conversions, but more often than not one way is just much simpler. In this case it's a pretty nice one anyway. The ratio of the length to the width of your hand is approximately 2 to 1. For every 2 whatevers in the length there's one whatever in the width. Okay, so it's just saying it's twice as long as it is wide. So if I say length to width, I go 2 to 1. Always make sure you get them in the right order. Length to width was 2 to 1. I've got everything lined up correctly. And then it says the width of Neil's hand is 9 centimeters. So in constructing this, I'm merely writing down the length to width. I'm writing down what I got given that it was 2 to 1. And then I write down, well, the width of Neil's hand. I just make sure I put this 9 centimeter width under the W. And you can see then that my unknown is this box here. Now how do I fill in that? And there's two ways to look at it. I can look at it, the first way I've done here on the left is I've seen a very clear times 9. This width of his hand is 9 compared to the ratio which is 1 so it's like this batch I'm making is 9 times bigger than the ratio given. So just times 9 times 9 that says that 18 centimeters would be the length for a 9 centimeter width hand. Perfect. Okay, just 9 times the simplified ratio. The other thing which might make uh, even more sense is just look at instead of vertically, what I do vertically, I could have said, look, the right hand side times 2 gives the left. Hence, if the right hand side is 9, times 2 will give left. That's exactly what the ratio tells me. Whatever is on the right, the width, needs to be times by 2 to become what's on the left, which is the length. So, yeah, I had an unknown. And it didn't matter whether I looked vertically or horizontally, it was going to be the same answer and I get 18 centimetres. Let's do that thing again. Read through the question. Sally works as a commercial carpet shampooer. She mixes shampoo with water, S to W, in the ratio 2 to 7 to use in her cleaner. How much water will she mix? 600 mils of shampoo. 60. Read the question, David. So it's shampoo, so I'm putting the 60 mils in the left column. It doesn't matter whether I put the units there or not, I can just deal with the number. I know that whatever answer I get is mils. But let's just look at my unknown is here. Now again, there's two ways to go about it, but one is probably nicer. I could say 2 times 3.5 uh, gives the water. So for every 2 bits of shampoo, there's 7 bits of water. So compared to the amount of shampoo you put in, put 3.5 times more water. Uh, that's easier than a vertical one. It's like this batch is 30 times bigger. If I was using 2 mils of shampoo, I would use 7 mils of water. This batch is 30 times bigger than that. It's a commercial carpet shampooer. So 2 times 30 gives 60, and 7 times 30 gives 210 mils. So often there's one way that's just easier. And if there isn't, well, we could have done the 3.5. How did I know that it was 3.5? You'll see the working down here. I'm saying 2 times what gives 7. We do a little bit of algebra here to say if 2 times what equals 7, then that thing I'm trying to find, I divide both sides by 2, 7 on 2 was the thing I was trying to find. That was a way to answer. If 2 times something equals 7, then that something is equal to 7 divided by 2. Okay, but we try and find the nicer way to do it. What do we got down here? Three sums of money, okay, we've got our first three-part ratio. Three sums of money are in the ratio two to three to five. If the smallest amount, which is clearly the two bits, is $4.80, find the largest amount, which clearly must be the five bits. Now, again, when I say bits, dollars, cents, it doesn't matter. 
I'm saying that two parts of this amount of money was equal to $4.80. Hence, what's one part of this amount worth? Well, one part must be half of that, $2.40. So that means that's two times $2.40. This will be three times $2.40. That'll be five times $2.40. The question only asks for the largest part. So I do my five times $2.40, which is $12. Again, it's just the same as like, maybe I, I said, look, for every two cents that's here, there's three cents here and there's five cents here, and four dollars eighty is four hundred and eighty cents. I'm just saying that how do I get from here to here? I times by two hundred and forty. This batch of money is two hundred and forty times bigger than the original ratio. So every number just got times by two hundred and forty. And how did I get the two forty? I worked out two times what gives four eighty. Well, that'll be two forty. So 5 times 240 would give me uh, 1,200 cents, $12. Now, this is different. So there's two types of ratio questions. I'll just back up again. And we said, finding one quantity when given another. So this is when we had got given a ratio, we were given one side, but one side was missing. Okay, now the next question says, dividing quantities into a given ratio. So instead of giving, getting given one side and finding the other, here you're given the total. And it says, here's the total, now split it into the two bits or three bits or four bits. So it's different. It's not given one side, find the other. It's here's an amount, split it. Now the first question says, Sam and Chris invested in a takeaway shop in the ratio three to two. So for every $3 Sam put in, Chris invested $2. Maybe Sam invested $300 and Chris inv invested $200. Whatever it was, it was in that ratio. Uh, their business made a profit of $40,000 and we're looking at how much they'll receive if they share the profit in the same ratio as what they invested. In other words, Sam invested more, he should get more of the profit. So we're going to get this $40,000 and split it up amongst these two people. So the first thing we do is say, well, how many bits do I need to split this $40,000 up into? If I'm going to give Sam three bits, let's go buckets, okay? I'm giving Sam three buckets of money, and Chris is going to get two buckets of money. How many buckets do I need? Five. Three plus two. I need to split my $40,000 up into five buckets of money, okay? So normally I'll just say parts, and you can see here I'm saying three plus two is split into five parts. What's 40,000 divided by five? Well, $40,000 divided by five is $8,000. So you're getting three lots of the 8,000, which is 24,000. Chris is getting two lots of the 8,000, which is 16,000. You can see, I'd always do this adding up. 24,000 plus 16,000 does equal the 40,000 I was meant to split. And are they in the same ratio? Well, I know they are because I times by the same number. Equally, I could divide this by 8,000, it gets me to 3. Divide this by 8,000, it gets me to 2. It's the same thing. So, it's pretty nice and it's very practical too. We split things up into ratios. Let's look at the next one. It's a ratio of colours. To make the colour orange, red and yellow paint are mixed in the ratio 4 to 3. So, 4 bits of red for 3 bits of yellow for this particular type of orange. How much red and yellow is needed to make 140 mils of orange paint? So it's the same question, because 140 mils of orange paint is not telling us how much red or yellow, it's telling us you want a total when mixed of 140 mils of this stuff. And if you look at, well, I need four parts of this compared to three parts of this. Again, I say, well, how many parts do you need? Four plus three, seven parts. 140 mils on seven is 20 mils. So that's four lots of 20 mils is 80 mils. That's three lots of 20 mils or 60 mils. I'll make sure that it still adds up to the total orange paint I want. And sure enough, 80 plus 60 is 140 mils. And is it still in the same ratio? Again, since I times by a 20 and times by a 20, they're still in the same ratio and everything's good. Mix 80 mils of red and 60 mils of yellow and we're good. Uh, the next one, okay. Again, we'll do it to the side. Let's read through carefully. A two litre container is used to make up an orange fruit drink. Okay. 500 mils of concentrate is poured into the container and then water is used to fill the remainder of the container. Now, do whatever's needed. Here's my two litre container. 
um, 500 mils of, con of concentrate and then water is used to fill the rest so I can see that whatever side I'm going to um, put C and W doesn't matter as long as I'm consistent I'm putting the concentrate on the left and the water on the right I know the concentrate was 500 mils and I know since it was only a 2 litre container and it got filled up with water well 2 litres is 2000 mils so I must have added 1500 mils of water to add up to that full 2000 mils and there if you want to look at the simplified ratio it says what's the ratio of concentrate to water in the fruit juice drink well if I'd read the question carefully it would have said it says concentrate to water so I'm glad I went C to W it actually doesn't say in simplest form but let's go for it we should put um, ratios in simplest form if we can I've got the same unit so I don't need them and I can see a common factor of 500 there's one 500 is 500 three 500 is 1500 so this concentrate to water ratio is 1 to 3 now part B says 240 milliliters of the fruit drink the fruit juice drink is poured into a glass how much of the drink is water okay here's my glass this is not to scale uh, and I've got 240 mils and this was made in this ratio so there's 240 mils in this glass and I know the ratio of concentrated water in that is 1 to 3 because it was mixed in the above ratio so now the question is what how much of the drink is water well I know in this glass for every one part of concentrate three parts of it is water so it's now like the other questions it's saying to me split 240 mils up into a concentrate and water split which is 1 to 3 where the total is 240 so how many parts do I have to break it up into one part three parts that's four parts so 240 mils split into four parts is 60 mils so one of these 60s is 60 three of these 60s is 180 yes they add up to 240 but the question only wanted to know how much of the drink was water that's how much 60 was concentrate but 180 was water hmm. almost fun I'm hoping now this next one in an orchard the ratio of orange trees to lemon trees orange to lemon is 3 to 1 while the ratio of lemon to mandarin is 2 to 5 Find the ratio of orange trees to lemon trees to mandarin trees. Sorry, totally had a just a brain moment. Um, don't publicise it. O to L to M. Now the problem here is I need there's three orange trees for every one lemon tree. There's five mandarin trees for every two lemon trees. Uh, they're not the same thing I'm not comparing lemons and lemons but if I want to like down here I can say that a ratio of 3 to 1 is exactly the same thing as 6 to 2 so if I'm saying for every 6 orange trees there are 2 lemon trees and for every 2 lemon trees there are 5 mandarin trees that's the ratio that's the direct the middle one's the same I'm saying that for every 6 orange there are 2 lemons for every 2 lemons there are 5 mandarins there's my ratio 6 to 2 to 5 oh beautiful so you've just got to make the common term the same uh, by multiplying or dividing by whatever number and now we can compare them. So now if someone asks me, well, what's the ratio of orange trees to lemon to mandarin? There's a 6 to 5. Or if someone asks me, what was the ratio of orange to mandarin? It's 6 to 5. There's 6 orange trees for every 5 mandarin. Part B, if there were 390 of these citrus trees in total, how many of each variety were in the orchard? Well, we're exactly back to where we were on the previous page. We've got a total of 390 trees, of which six parts are orange, two parts is this, five parts is that. So how many parts are we discussing? Six plus two is eight, plus five is 13. 390 on 13, that's 30 trees per part. So six thirties is 180, two thirties is 60, and five thirties is 150. If I add them all up, sure enough, they add up to 390. And that just tells me how many of each type of tree there was. 180 orange, 60 lemon, and 150 mandarin. Loving ratios. And now we move to rates. Now, the first issue, um, rates often, or will contain, a per statement when we need words. 
let's go through where they've got them rates of comparison when they're different units like good old I'm traveling at this many kilometers per hour okay kilometers and hours can't be converted to the same thing but I can say if I'm traveling at 60 kilometers per hour that per is this forward slash and it means over this is the same as writing 60 kilometers over one hour which is the same as um, the ratio of 60 kilometers happening for every one hour oops I should put units but the point is we don't do ratios like that ratios we could at least convert to the same units but you can see the analogy now so we've got to note that yeah the word per means for every this happens that happens it's like a ratio sign and like dollars per kilometer is how many dollars I'm spending maybe on a taxi per kilometer maybe on petrol but we've got a list of conversions here and yes we do assume that this is either well it's knowledge for the course whether you knew it before or not let's just look at what we're requiring the one kilometer is a thousand me meters well if you know kilo means a thousand then it doesn't matter if it's meters or liters or a unit like candelas it doesn't matter if we understand the unit kilo means a thousand um, one meter is a thousand millimeters and a milli is on the other side milli is a thousandth so one meter is literally a thousand millimeters because a millimeter is a thousandth of a meter um, hundred centimeters well centi meaning uh, hundredths so a centimeter literally means a hundredth of a meter so here's the meter here's the hundredth of a meter and a hundred of these centimeters make the the meter so I won't go through all these units because you can see it's just repeating that it's you know be a kilo milli we do go up to mega here mega means million so kilo is a thousand and mega is million but we don't there's further than that we know from computers it goes to giga and terra and peter and stuff like that um, if we used anything outside of this table we'll tell you what it meant okay but yeah, the highest we go is mega, and the lowest we're going, we don't even go to micro, we go to milli. So milli is a thousandth. So I think of here's my base unit, like a litre. A thousand litres is, so here I'm going to write a kilolitre. I'm going to write times a thousand, gets me up to kilolitre. And times a million, gets me up to megalitre. But if I get a litre and divide by a thousand, I'm down to millilitre. Divide by a million, I'd be microliter, but we're not going there. So there's our standard mega, million, kilo, thousand, milli, thousandth, um, and also cent is chucked in there because you know it's a pretty regular measurement. Um, now, what else is there? A hectare seems odd that it's 10,000, everything normally leaps in thousands, but a hectare is defined as a, a paddock, a field, a lot of land that's 100 meters by 100 meters. If I multiply 100 by 100, it's 1 by 1 is 1 with four zeros. Hence, that's where the 10,000 comes from. So I don't necessarily memorize a hectare as being 10,000 meters squared. I memorize it being 100 by 100 field, but it's the same thing. One meter cubed is a kiloliter. Um, I'd want to know that. Think of a one meter by one meter by one meter box, a very small water tank. Uh, a meter being, well, I won't try and do that on here. But well, that contains one kiloliter. In other words, a thousand liters fits in this uh, one by one by one meter cube. Another thing that's nice to know is one centimeter cubed is one mil. This tiny little centimeter cube that's one by one by one centimeter fits a milliliter of, of substance. Okay, and then the time. Hopefully, we know our years, leap years, and that. So, anyway, let's do some examples. Let's control A, delete P. Ashley made a 12 minute phone call and was charged $6. Find the cost of the call per minute. Now the way I've laid this out, and you can do it all sorts of ways, this is going to be a very logical progression. So if you've got other ways to do it, it's all good. I've done it like the unitary method from last week, where I said, you know, this is what I'm given, this is what I want. What I got given was, Ashley made a 12 minute phone call and was charged $6. Now the whole left, right, should I write $6 cost me uh, I mean six dollars was for 12 minutes or should I write 12 minutes uh, cost me six dollars it makes no difference okay I'm just writing the relationship I got given and then I see well what am I being asked 
cost of the coal per minute means, well, if it's six dollars for 12 minutes, and I only want to know one minute, I just look at the relationship. Clearly, it's divided by 12. And a six divided by 12, six dollars on 12, well, six on 12 is a half, so it's half a dollar. 50 cents, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you can see it didn't matter whether, which, what I wrote on left or right, I'm still going to notice that I need to divide by 12 and divide by 12. And whether I answer is 50 cents or half a dollar. Perfect. The next one, uh, exchange rate. Convert 130 uh, GBP, British pounds, to Australian dollars, an exchange rate of one Australian dollar is equal to 0.65 GBP. Well, that's what I'm given this time. I'm given the exchange rate that one AUD will give me 0.65 GBP. What do I want to know? I want to know what 130 GBP is. Well, I'm going to write 130 GBP here and try and work out how to get from here to here. Now, the truth is, I can get this answer straight from saying, look, if 0.65 GP is one Australian dollar, and I want to convert, I want to know how many Australian dollars this is, just get 130 and divide it by 0.65 will tell me the answer straight up. But I'm just using the method from last week because a lot of people like it. If I say that, how do I get to know what one GBP is worth? How do I turn something into itself? I divide by itself. So if I divide by, I should write it over here. If I divide 0.65 by 0.65, I'm going to find out what 1 GBP is. If I get 1 AUD and divide it, I've got to do the same thing. So I'm going to get whatever the calculator says 1 or 0.65 is, AUD, is 1 GBP. And then to get from 1 to 130, I just times by 130. So it's a pure calculator exercise. That ends up saying, well, it's 200. So there was two ways to do it. I think this is a very nice way to set it out. Even though I know I'm messy and I'm sorry. I'm trying to do the vertical screen. I need a detachable camera, so... Or maybe I should turn the camera off. Who needs this? Um, anyway, it's a nice way to set it out, but if you can see the answer was just 130 divided by 0.65, fantastic. It's the same thing. Let's do some more. I'm going to try my neatest on this one. Lucia's old car uses 12 litres of petrol, costing $17.40 for a trip of 75 kilometres. Here we've got... Well, three bits of info. Normally these things just give you, this gives this, and then we carry on with these two things. So, depending on the question, we might have excessive information. We don't always have to use everything. Let's just try and make it clear what we're trying to find out. The first question, find the car's petrol consumption expressed in litres per 100 kilometres. Okay, got nothing to do with the dollars question, eh? So I don't care about that $17.40 info. All I'm interested in, litres per 100 kilometres. What in my question compared litres and kilometres? Well, it said 12 litres is needed for 75 kilometres. That's what it told me. All right. Now, what one am I trying to get? I'm trying to get how many litres per 100 kilometres. So I'm trying to get from 75 kilometres to 100 kilometres. And I could divide by 75 and go down to 1 and then times by 100. But as I've done here, I'm just it's staring at me that they're both uh, multiples of 25. So to me, 75 divided by 3 will tell me how many litres I'll need for 25 k's. So if I divide by 3, that's 4 litres will be needed for 25 k's. And I know 25 k's times 4 will get me up to 100. And 4 by 4 is 16. So 16 litres will get me 100 k's. So my answer is 16 litres per 100 kilometres. Again, I like the method, but do as you feel. B was what's the cost of Lugina, Lucia's journey per kilometre. So it's only talking about cost and kilometres. So I look at my question, cost and kilometres. Well, the cost it told me was $17.40. And the kilometre associated with that was 75 kilometres. And I want to know the cost of Lucia's journey. Um, per kilometer, as in, I want to know per, that means per one kilometer. So I know that 75 kilometers cost us $17.40. I want the cost per kilometer. How do I turn a 75 into a one? I divide by itself. 
So I'm going to divide both sides by 75. And if I get $17.40 and divide by 75, I get a 0.232 dollars for one kilometer. In other words, 23.2 cents. Good. All right. Um, now we've got some this fairly common question: kilometers per hour, one meters per second, kilometers per hour. Now. It says, Jamie Summers, a finalist in the World Athletics Championship, can run 100 metres in 10 seconds. All right, 100 metres takes 10 seconds. And then I was asked to find a speed in kilometres per hour. Now, the order I do here doesn't really matter, as in, I don't want metres, I want kilometres. I don't want seconds, I want hours. So I could do whatever order I want. But I know that, um, I like to deal in whole numbers. So I know that if I convert from 10 seconds and go up to hours, I'm, she's going to be able to do, I mean, pretend that she could run at the same pace. Um, I'm going to get a very big number here. If I wanted to start out by converting from metres to kilometres, I'd have to divide by 1,000. And I'd have to say, well, that's 0 0.1 kilometres. I don't know. I just don't, I don't want to have to deal with decimals if I don't have to. So instead of converting this number and dividing by something, I'm going to convert this by times in. So if I've got 10 seconds, my first step is, well, if I times both sides by 6, at least 10 seconds becomes 60 seconds as 1 minute. So 600 metres in 1 minute. And now, in my, I want to get to hours, so I'm just going to times by 60. And 600 times by 60, well, 6, 6 is a 36, puts three zeros back on. There's 36,000 metres and we times by 60, so that's one hour. And now I'd rather do my divide by a thousand because 36,000 meters is 36 kilometers. Literally 36 kilo meaning a thousand. I started out saying, be neat, David, and look what happened. Oh, and I can't even talk properly. <laughs> I divide by a thousand, so 36 is 36 kilometers per one hour. There's my answer 36 kilometers per hour. So that was a nice progression. Let's check the next one here. Um, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I meant control A, delete. Thank you. The next one says a tap is leaking at the rate of 15 millilitres every 10 seconds. Find the amount of water in litres wasted each day. So I want to get the mils to litres and I only get 10 seconds to each day, to a day. Again, I could convert 15 mils to litres and call it 0 0.015 litres, but no, I'd rather go the other one instead. Leave the 15 in mils, convert it 10 seconds, we'll just like the other one. Times six will get us to one minute, and times six will get me to 90 mil. Uh, times 60 again will get me to one hour, and times 60 here, well, 6 uh, times 9 is 54, plus the two zeros. And I could already, if I want, I can convert, convert to litres here, because I've already got to 5,400 mils. I could call that 5.4 litres now if I want. It really makes no difference, but let's just, I'm probably just doing this on the calc. One hour, well, I'll times that by 24 to get to one day, and suddenly I've already got my answer, 5,400 times 24 gives 129 600 mils divide by a thousand gives me 129.6 litre in one day that's how much we're losing 129.6 litres per day hmm. and we're done great okay uh, hope that was useful I'm gonna try and do another bye